It seems that we have a visitor, Holmes. Indeed. Come in. Hello, Sir Henry Baskerville. Did you have a good trip? But how do you know who I am? I had not announced my visit. By looking at your dress, it is totally unsuited to our wet English weather. This allowed me to deduce that you came here in a hurry and carrying the bare minimum in your luggage. Then there is a blue ink stain on your thumb, the same blue ink used by the passenger service at Waterloo Station to print their tickets. Your ticket has stained your thumb because of the rain. Also, my attention was attracted to your cufflinks with the initials HB, but still I had not yet made the connection with the famous Baskerville family. It is by remembering a Times article that I deduced your identity. It was telling of the odd death of Charles Baskerville and the likely return of his nephew and only heir, Henry. Brilliant. Your reputation is well-deserved, Mr. Holmes. But let me explain the purpose of my visit. I am... You do not believe in legends, and you would like to clear the circumstances of your uncle's death. You need a factual, logical, and rational explanation of what some call the Curse of the Baskervilles. And who else, in all modesty, but Sherlock Holmes and his faithful friend Dr. Watson would be able to solve such a mystery? Watson, my friend, pack your bags. We're leaving for Baskerville Hall. Tell us about the curse of the Baskervilles, Henry. Its origin dates back to my ancestor, Hugo Baskerville. It is said he was a vile person who earned the wrath of the devil. After his death, all our ancestors seemed to come to bad ends at Baskerville Hall. At the scene of each death, there were always dog or wolf tracks, but gigantic. Thus, over the centuries, a legend was built, that of a creature from hell, the Hound of the Baskervilles. My uncle was sure that it was a reality. He was convinced that the beast would take him sooner or later, as it took all those our lineage. With his last letter, he sent me this medallion. According to Charles, it was needed to break the curse of the Baskervilles, but he did not know how to use it. Do you believe in this legend, Mr. Holmes? We'll have to exhaust all other hypotheses before falling back on that one. Baskerville Hall in sight. Holmes, Doctor, welcome to Baskerville Hall. The servants are not here to welcome us, I fear. They were severely affected by the death of my uncle and have since retired. The family portraits gallery, I assume. But why such expressions on their faces? These pictures have not always been so disturbing. According to my uncle, the changes in the paintings occurred after the violent death of the portrayed Baskerville. It appears to be one of the effects of the curse. Have you noticed? The family coats of arms under the pictures are missing. Indeed, it is an interesting point to begin our investigation. Where can these coats of arms be, and why did they disappear? Let's try to find them. I cannot stay here any longer. The sight of those ghastly faces is unbearable. Sir Roger Baskerville is certainly one of the most famous hunters in all of Great Britain. Indeed, Dr. Watson, my grandfather spent a large part of his life traveling the colonies of the Empire to stalk the largest predators in the world. Let us try to learn more about the tragic death of Sir Roger Baskerville. Such a distinguished hunter could not possibly have been killed by a simple dog.
A unicorn, a dragon, a werewolf? I can't believe my eyes. Don't let appearances fool you, Henry. Dr. Watson is right. It is unlikely that these fantastic animals ever existed. It is, rather, a matter of a remarkable job of taxidermy. Where are we? I believe the correct question is rather, when are we? What do you mean, Holmes? Look at these traces of struggle. Look at the shape of the room, its decoration. Everything appears as if Sir Roger was just killed. Smell the air. The odors of gunpowder and blood are still fresh. You don't really think that we went back in time, do you? Normally, I would reply no and laugh at your naivety. But for now, I'd rather not say anything. I do not know how or why, but it seems that we have stepped back to a few minutes after the death of Sir Roger. There is always an explanation. Be patient. Look at this copy of the Times. It's almost 90 years old. Either it is perfectly kept, or we are really at the beginning of the century. of the coat of arms of Sir Roger Baskerville. Let's go to his portrait. The painting seems to be regaining its original colors, as if the curse was lifted. Holmes, Watson, look! By inserting the arms, we've triggered a mechanism. A secret cache. There's something inside. 
The diameter of this jewel seems to perfectly match the empty slot on the medallion. I think Sir Roger has given us an important element for our investigation. Look, there's a note in the back of the jewel. Physical power and brute force. Amazing! The medallion seems to react to the presence of the jewel. It vibrates. Let us try to use it. Perhaps on the boards that block the door to Louisa's room. Indeed, it seems that the powers of this locket give us interesting perspectives. Powers? Dear friend, let's not sink into superstition. This is Louisa's room. She was a great actress. The poor woman did not live long enough to have the career she deserved. Do you know how she tried to escape the beast? According to my uncle, she tried to escape reality by creating a world of her imagination. She hid there, thinking she could escape her fate. But the curse took her anyway. And what of this refuge she created? My uncle found Louisa's writing speaking of a world behind the mirror. She called it her shelter, but Charles never found out what it was exactly. <laughs> 